Hello and welcome back to Lorefet Gaming Plays Baldur's Gate 3. I'm your host Lorefet. In this Baldur's Gate 3 build video, we're doing the Pure Wizard Evocation Epic High Damage Build. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more builds like this. Do not forget to hit notification bell so be update and more. Now let's get to the pros and cons. Now cons, you're squishy, you have less hit points, you don't have much weapons, you get surrounded, you're kind of screwed. Now advantages with this uh, build definitely you have very high intelligence so any of those intelligence I should say dialogues and other things you need to do you'll always pass I should say at least 95% of the time. Another thing is you get to pick and choose your spells it's not limited like the sorcerer and such. A uh, good thing is your spell damage will be pretty high and also one more thing some of the encounters you can basically solo or become the one who's the victor. And one more thing, say goodbye bye to Orin the Red. On with the build, everyone. Let's uh, do go over the races now. Please note there will be two different characters I'm going to do. Gail will be there only for the demonstration purposes. And as for the leveling up, yeah, I'm going to have the hireling to do a, do that. As if the character you're doing is a level 1 spell. Just getting out of the way. Now, best, uh, I should say, characters for this build besides yourself is Gale and if you want to switch Dark Urge to a wizard go ahead and do so. Let's uh, do uh, go over the races. Let's talk about elves. First of all they get 9 meters per turn which is nice. And let's see what else they get. They get elven uh, weapons. If you want to use a long sword, short sword, short bow and long bow that's good for you. Dark vision can see in the dark up to 12 meters. Fate ancestry advantage on saving throws against being charmed. It cannot be magically put to sleep. Now, now the best elven race for this is the high elf. They get a free level zero spell. That is very uh, good. So if you want to go ahead and get that, that is uh, great. And you get to select it. For now, it forces me to select the firebolt one. And yeah, if we uh, select everything out like that on the, all the other spells, we get to select it. So I'm going to try to demonstrate that. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. Yeah, see if we could put any others if we wanted to. So that we'll uh, leave that for uh, now. Let's go to another race, Tieflings. This is actually a good race for a wizard, believe it or not. Yeah, they do get around this game quite a bit. Base racial speed, that's 9 meters per turn. They have dark vision, so they can see in the dark just like our elven counterparts. Or elven friends. Hell's resistance, they only take half fire damage because they have very good fire resistance. Armodius Tieflings are the best because they get produced flame, which you get a flame in your hand, you toss it, which is nice. It's good until long rest to get other spells as well. Now the next race I do love as a wizard for this build is a human. They get 9 meters per turn. They don't get that dark vision. So you have to drink some dark vision elixirs or something like that. Civil militia. They get weapons and pike spears, halberds and such. Human versatility. They get an additional skill to be proficient in. Everybody else gets 4. They get 5. I'll demonstrate that later on. Now uh, next up I feel as good as the half elves. And uh, they're just like their uh, other ones. Base racial speed is 9 meters. That's good. Let's go ahead and talk about the next one. And let's see. Uh, civil militia just like the humans, which is nice. They get dark vision. That's good. And same as the uh, elven races, they get advantages uh, against charm and they cannot be put magically asleep. The uh, high half elves, they're uh, very good, just like their uh, high elf counterparts, which is uh, great. And you yeah, get to select a level 0 spell if you want to. So uh, definitely go for those, any of those, if you uh, like that. Now, uh, next up are the gnomes. Yeah, we're picking all three for this. They have base racial speed of 7.5 meters, which is good. And also they have advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. Yep, all three variants do have that. Rock gnomes, they have dark vision up to 12 meters, which is good. And uh, add twice of your proficiency bonus to histor history checks. There's some out there, which is good. Forest gnomes have ability to speak with animals, so you use them once per long rest, and that's good. It also saves those uh, potions for others. They also have dark vision see up to 12 meters. Last but not least, deep gnomes, they can see up to 24 meters, best for iron and dark out of the three. And uh, they have advantages on stealth checks, which is good as well if you're going for that department. And that's about it for the races, so let me select the human, and then after that, let me uh, change the... Uh, yeah, there you go. That is perfect. So let's go to the level zero spells to select. Now, wizards basically, they blow stuff up. In this build, they really blow stuff up. 
also they're very good with other things as uh, well so we'll leave it at that also we get arcane recovery so we replenish some spell slots and we get our first level one spell slot so let's talk about the level zero spells you want to uh, get now the uh, first one I'm gonna go ahead and talk about is blade ward you only take half damage from blunt piercing and slashing damage so that's for two rounds so cast it for combat and you're set if you want to go uh, that route firebolt you do one to ten uh, damage on what that's fire damage and of course that goes higher when you level up and the last one I like is uh, honorable mention I'll say is ray of frost you want to go that route that's good as well as your high elf or half high elf level zero spell that you get free now last but not least I like this one's utility uh, that is mage hand so if there's something's out of reach or by out of reach you could just pull it down or something like that that is a good spell to use that's level zero now please know you could get all these spells via scrolls but I'm just going to suggest which one you should definitely get when you level up sleep uh, put creatures in a magical slumber so to have to have, have a combination of 24 hit points and lower 25 hit points you cannot put them to sleep magic missile uh, let me go ahead and explain about that shoot three magical darts each dart deals two to five force damage they always hit their target very good DPS spell and especially good at a certain encounter Mage Armor uh, protects the target from attacks, increases armor class to 13, its dexterity modifier is uh, included, which is good. Uh, Thunder Wave, uh, it does 2 to 16 damage on all foes in a way, pushes them away as well, also destroys objects on certain uh, parts of the game. I like this one, Feather Fall, because it says you and your nearby allies are immune to falling damage. Unless you drop off of a ledge, then yeah, you're dead. Good to have. By familiar, this is a useful utility spell. You can use it, for example, summon a rat, rabbit, something like that. They go through a hole, and then they can open the door for you. Now, there's two backgrounds I'm going to talk about. Uh, Sage and Alkalite are the best ones to uh, get. Sage is absolute number one to get for spellcasters, so definitely go for Sage. If not, Alkalite is good as uh, well. Uh, any of the other ones, I would advise against. So it's up to you on uh, the uh, backgrounds on that. So let's go to the next thing. Let's clear that ability points. We're going to go ahead and uh, do uh, two things right now. We're going to put intelligence as our uh, plus two one and dexterity as our uh, one, plus one bonus, which is uh, good. So let's uh, put our intelligence to 16. That's going to be our main stat. We're going to level up like crazy with leaf strength at eight. That's our weakness. Dexterity 16 for that armor class boost. Constitution of 14 for some more hit points. And uh, wisdom and uh, charisma to 10. So yeah, that's our weakness is our strength. And we're going to review it again. And yeah, so that's the only thing. Dexterity is going to be 16. Again, armor class and dexterity saves, which is uh, good. Uh, Constitution's 14. Once again, I'll repeat it for those who just came in. More hit points and also constitution saves too. That requires that. Main stat, we're going to be leveling that to 20. Intelligence. So yeah, that's going to be our bread and butter. Wisdom to 10 for story reasons because there's some throws on that. And charisma to 10 for talking stuff. Now, since we're a human, so we get to pick uh, extra human ability. So, but for now, you know, I, I'm going to go over those. You get Arcana History, you pick Sage, which is good. I'm going to pick another Intelligence check, which is Investigation. So, that'll be for our sec, uh, sec, first skill to select. Uh, now, we're not going to do uh, Nature yet, but we're going to do Religion. That's another one that does require Intelligence. So, we'll pass a lot of Religion checks like crazy. Now, I'm going to put nature there so we can pass some nature checks if we're human. If not, you're stuck without nature. Now, as for preparing spells, up to you on how you prepare it. But here's my suggestion. Find familiar is good so we could, uh, you know, use them to get through places we cannot. Mage armor is great so we can cast that at the beginning of combat. Magic missile is great for DPS. And thunder wave is good too. So, our next part of this build video we're going to talk about is the three hidden spells. So, let's do that. Let's uh, go over the hidden spells in the game. Reason why I put this there, well, they're hidden, and there's one of them that is really OP and broken. So here's the deal. Find familiar cheeky closet. Summons a very mouthy closet. Not the one you all been seeing on this channel, but still it's much better. Found in the apothecary cellar in the Blight of Village in Aquan. That's the same where you get that creepy necromancer book at. If you decide to destroy it or uh, not. Now another thing is dethrone. Now, this uh, necromancy spell does 30 to 80 necro damage. Sounds like it's a single target one. It's in the Sorcerer's Sundries Vault in Act 3. 
Last but not least is the curriculum of strategy, artistry of war. It summons six spirits. Each of those spirits does 2d6 plus six damage. Now, all six of them can do up to 100 damage. They can one-shot bosses if you could def definitely time this right on certain ones. Otherwise, I'll definitely kill them big time if everybody else did some damage as well. It's a very broken spell, everyone. Sorcerer's Sundry's Vault in Act 3. Same place where the previous spell is at. When you find a little box, you open it up with a key you got from the boss. Or you uh, lockpick it. Then you read the book to get this uh, spell. Do not leave... I should say act three and go to end game without this. Anyways, let's go ahead and level up our wizard. Let's uh, go ahead and definitely level up. Now, uh, please note I'm using this, I should say hireling, as if I did create a level one character to 12. So let's uh, go ahead and level up. And yeah, yeah, we'll still be in the demonstration for combat and other things as well. We get extra spell slot. We also get a nice arcane ability. We're gonna pick evocation, so evocation salvage so it'll cost less to scribe scrolls yeah you have to use a uh, gold in order to scribe in the game and also we get this as a uh, well so we get saving throws against evocation spells which is a uh, good like a nice bonus so that's an another thing that's great about it. and besides you get to do some nice uh, damage as an evocation uh, spellcaster and we gain two spell slots too okay let's go ahead and go over each and every one of them and i'm gonna go ahead and talk about them I say do a Witch Bolt because it's a very good electric spell, or I say lightning, depends on how you uh, view it. And it does 1 to 12 damage. You could do it every round, which is good. Chromatic Orb I like because the 3 to 24 is nice. It can be resisted, but still, it's another good alternative to uh, use as well. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of, uh, let's see here. Uh, it, yeah, I have to redo all this again. Different character. I do Find Familiar, Magic Missile, Mage Armor, Thunder Wave, and of course, I'm going to do Witch Bolt. That's another good one as well. There's other alternatives that's good too. Now we're at level 3. Also, I forgot to mention is, is if you already scribe a scroll, just pick the one that's the best for evocation or close to it. Now we get the level 2 spells or circle 2. I did knock for a huge reasons because uh, in case we don't have a stare on the party, party I should say. You should definitely use that to open up chests and or doors. So let's go ahead and get the next one. Now this one, I felt like this is a, a really good spell, Mirror Image. It's not evocation one, but you cast it on yourself, and then you get about a total of 9 AC, which is good. I mean, very useful in combat. Let's go ahead and put Mirror Image there. And if we need utility, we'll uh, switch, uh, let's see here, uh, we'll switch that out for that. Still, as a wizard, you can switch spells in and out as freely as you want to, which is a good thing, by the way. Now at level 4, things are going to start to really get up there, seriously. Now we get a level 0 spell, that's why I call it. So let's do uh, Ray of Frost, if uh, you don't like that one. Uh, another good alternative is, I think, uh, I think uh, your Poison Spray or something like that, but that Ray of Frost does 1 through 8 damage, it could uh, slow down targets. Misty Step, I picked this one. This was one a dire importance because the uh, main reason. Teleport. So if they're foe too close, we cast that, move away from them. Scorching Ray, you could have got that first, but it does 6 to 36 damage. So it does 2 to 12 each uh, ray. It does very OP. Now there's two good choices I did try. Warcaster is a good one on uh, boosting up your concentration spells. Also you get the Shocking Graphs, spell, I should say level 0 spell as a reaction if they get too close to you. But I feel like this one's better. Spell Sniper. Now, uh, let's see here. What that does is a number of... You need to roll a critical hit while, of course, attacking with spells are reduced by one. Very good. And I decided to Eldritch Blast because it's another good long-range attack. This one's by force damage. That's why I definitely pick it. Shocking Graphs is good, but there's other uh, better spells out there. But still, we'll uh, pick that one for the force damage that's level zero. Now we're at level 5, everyone. Yep, you uh, guessed it. We gain, of course, two more uh, spells to pick from, and they are level 3. I call this the Haste and Fireball combination. It's been ever since from the Baldur's Gate 1 days. Also use the Neverwinter Nights 1 to pick that. Now, Haste does this, gives you an extra action, become faster, and two armor class, which is good. And Fireball, yeah, that's 8 to 48 damage. Uh, it's like an AoE uh, spell. You you point the direction where you want to blast it. Good times. Clears out weak enemies real quick. I am dead serious. 
So let's go ahead and uh, pick those uh, two uh, spells there. Let me uh, go ahead and switch that with haste. And that looks all good. So I'm all set up for being more of a DPS, sir. If I need to, I'll put Misty Step in. So we're at level 6, so we get ourselves a subclass feature. So when creatures successfully do their saving throws on one of your level 0 spells, it still takes half the damage, but no other effects will happen. So it's a good thing. Instead of taking no damage, they take half now. So now we're going to get ourselves another level 3 spell. We're going to do counter spell. So this is an attempt to stop spell casting. It'll cost a level 3 spell slot, but... That's a good thing. Another thing I like to do is remove curse because later on there's a few times you're going to abuse that, especially at the mirror loss. More on that later on when we uh, do get to that point in this build. Again, uh, if you already got those spells, then pick more evocation spells that are level, I should say, circle three, which is fine. I put counter spell in there because it's very uh, good at this uh, point. Start countering spells. Now we're at level seven, so let's uh, go ahead and. Uh, yeah, see what we get. Well, wow, we get ourselves another uh, spell slot. And we get picked two more spells, which is level four. Dimension door, so you and one other uh, character could teleport to somewhere else. It has to be uh, medium size and lower. Great spell to use and abuse. I use that towards the end of the game. Ice storm, 60 40 damage, AoE. You point the direction where you want to cast the ice storm at. You could do a lot. It also makes the surface slick. And if they make their safe throws, they only take half of that. So, uh, basically, this is a nice uh, uh, AoE spell to abuse. Let's go ahead and do this. At this point, I'll probably say good ideal to, uh, let's get rid of that Fairfall, and I don't know why it keeps on doing that. And that looks uh, good. Let me get rid of uh, one more spell. Uh, fine. Yeah, let's get rid of that one and put Misty Step on there so we can start teleporting around. Yeah, uh, if I need any other uh, evocation spells, I'll uh, definitely switch some of that in and out like I did with Magic Missile. Yeah, always change your spells around on whatever you're going to fight, no matter uh, what. Now we're at, you uh, guessed it, level 8. So every uh, four levels we get feats. Except for fires, they get, of course, a free feat if I remember at level 6. So let's pick our, uh, you guessed it, level 4 spell again. I did banishment, so if a foe summons a creature, we could banish it. It goes bye-bye. Uh, another thing is I like to do is Blight. Uh, I'm going to say honorable mention is the Conjuring spell, Elvritz Black Tentacles. Those are uh, good as well. So, yeah, it's up to you on that. You want the Black Tentacles or uh, Blight. Now, if you got both by scribing, you should be scribing like crazy. Then uh, you can pick anything else that's evocation or something like that. Or invisibility. That's always uh, good. I get rid of Find Familiar at this point because uh, at some point I'm going to start using other summons as my source. And let's put the banishment there and the uh, blight spell. I always like the blight spell because, especially in the shower curse lands, there's some cursed plant creatures. So now we're going to pick our feats. Put your points in intelligence. We're going to get that to 20 in this build. That's going to be your bread and butter for this build for your ability scores to boost up, anyways. Now at level uh, 9, everyone. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Spells. Let's see here. There's some good ones. I like Cloud Kill personally because. It does 5 to 40 damage. We have to maintain every round, but it's a very good, powerful spell to abuse. Another thing I'm going to pick is a Conjuring spell. is a Conjuring Elemental. If you don't like to do that, Cone of Cold is a good alternative. Conjuring Elemental is one of the most OP uh, summons in the game. They can be used as can folder, distraction, you name it. And believe me, uh, they helped me out with a certain boss fight that you did see at the very beginning of the video. And let's uh, go ahead and put that in there. If I wanted to, we'll put a... Uh, let's see, what else? We'll get rid of Fairfall for now. And we'll uh, put that there. That looks all uh, good and set up to uh, go. Now we're at level 10. After this level, will be two more levels and we're at the cap. So we get ourselves a new ability. So your vocation magic is uh, heightened. In other words, uh, you can add your intelligence modifier for the damage roll. So, for example, if it does 6 through uh, 40 damage, you add plus 4 to it. That's our current intelligence modifier. More intelligence, more damage you do with evocation spells. I did shocking grabs because at that point I felt like it's a good idea to have a close range level zero spell if in case foes come close to me. And of course it has advantage against metallic creatures. There's some we face in the game. We're going to pick Cone of Cold. This is a frontal AoE damage spell. You blast it and whatever's in front of you gets frozen. Uh, if they res uh, resist it, they uh, take half of the 8 through 64 damage plus the intelligence modifier. Hold Monster, this is used for a lot of situations towards the end of the uh, game, including uh, one of the secret boss fights. Get this. There's also other spells you get to pick as well. 
you uh, choose. And there's these secret spells. One of them is level five. Just remember uh, to uh, definitely, once you get that spell, get a spell slot, slot into that. You know it's a one-time long rest type of deal, but it's a good spell to abuse. There you go. We're uh, good and set up to uh, go. I'm just looking over everything. At this point, everything is fine. Let's go ahead and put that in there. We'll do some more DPS on it. Now we're at level 11, everyone. So, oh, well, we get another uh, a spell slot. And, uh, of course, you uh, guessed it. More spells to pick from. Now we're at level 6. This is important. Glove and vulnerability. Now, you drop this barrier down. Whoever's inside the glove is immune. There's a few times you're going to abuse that, especially during one of the boss fights in the game. Make sure you scrap this ASAP. Now, another one I like is, uh, is uh, let's see here, Chain Lightning. So uh, it does initial 10 to 80 damage. And, of course, anybody else in its path will do about the same damage from that. This is a room clear. Your best evocation spell in the game that's very high in DPS damage. Now, let's go ahead and start swapping some of these out. We'll get rid of Fireball. And we'll uh, put these two in there. And that should definitely do it. So let's go ahead and level up to 12 next. Now, at this point, we're at the cap. This is it, everyone. So, we'll pick our last two spells. You already picked the other spells. Go in the lower circles if you want to. Let me uh, go ahead and select and suggest which one you get. Now, Sunbeam. This one will do 6 to 48 radiant damage. Flies all when it's in its path. Great against the undead. And, of course, if they uh, make a save, they take half. Now, Disintegrate. That's a good transmute spell. I prefer us. Uh, let's see here. Where is it at? Okay, Orca's Freezing Spear, you toss a spear, you do 10 to 60 damage to the Evocation spell, and of course there's also, uh, you could store it for later. Very nice uh, damage spell to abuse and use. Now we're going to get ourselves another feat, we're going to put our last points in Intelligence after I do this. There you go, where we look good to uh, go. And let's uh, go ahead and uh, do this. So put your uh, ability improvements and your Intelligence should be at 20. With that done, we're done with, of course, leveling up, so let's go ahead and talk about the next part of this build video. Now, there are permanent ability score boosts in the game, one in each act. So, Act 1, if you decide to spare Auntie Ethel, you get a choice of a plus one ability score item you get to use for yourself. Just don't let your paladin do it, just in case you don't want to uh, make him Oathbreaker, just being cautious at that point, especially the Oath of Vengeance, since Oath of Vengeance wants to kill evil at all costs. Or whatever they uh, perceive as evil. Let you do it, of course. That's why I advise. Next up is, uh, I should say, Act 2. You must have a Asteron with you. Have him bite Aja. That is the Alchemy Merchant in the Moonrise Towers. Now, normally I would show you on how to actually uh, do that in person. However, it's a plus 2 Strength Potion. So, I still advise doing it if you want to definitely drink it for yourself. Or... Better yet, give it one to your party members who's focused more on the strength. Now, this one's the most important one in my mind, is the mirror loss. There will be three possible outcomes, but beforehand on uh, that, I'll uh, explain now. So, uh, if you on, you have to make some checks on it, mainly intelligence checks. Well, this build, you're going to pass some religion checks, arcana checks. When you do it twice, you have a choice of losing a stat. You lose two points, however, it is cured by remove curse. That's why I put it in there for this build to uh, select. So uh, with that uh, choice, then you, know, you get another one. Now, just don't deceive the mirror. If you do, you get nothing. Nada. Zilch. So you, it'll be three possible outcomes. So first of all, it's plus one charisma. It'll say a certain message and a plus two stat of your choice. It's a hit and a roll on that. And then after that, there's another choice. You don't pass the other charisma one. You still get the plus two stat of your choice. Now, uh, after you lose the stats... You don't pass anything. You get nothing. That's it. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the uh, demonstration on this mirror loss. After you pass your two talking checks, in the case Arcana or Religion twice, and what happens is you uh, lost uh, one of the six stats. For example, you should definitely want to lose something like Dex or something like that. Now, don't deceive the mirror. Don't be deceptive. You get nothing. So anyways, I'm going to go over real quick one. The numbers, they're exactly the same as the uh, lost version. So at least for one through uh, six. So let's uh, go over each and every one of them. So the uh, first one on the list when you're about to uh, see it is strength. That is number one. Just remember on the lost one, that's the same thing. So don't panic at all. See, there's number one strength. Again, I'm just repeating that. Number two is dexterity. 
Number three sees the memory of Barbarian. That's Constitution. Now, number four, this is the one you want to go for, is Intelligence, the Candle Keep one, since the Candle Keep's a full book there. Number five is a Wisdom, and number six is Gal is a, I should say, Charisma. Now, I'm just demonstrating this with my Paladin since I picked Charisma at the time, but for this build, pick number four, pick Intelligence. Very important on uh, this. So, uh, once you uh, do gain, of course, the stat you want, and the stat you lost, then cast, uh, I should say, definitely remove curse. When you uh, do that, you remove the negative. However, you do keep the positive. So it's like a permanent stat boost. One of the best ones in the entire game, if you know how to manipulate the system. So let's go over the before and after. Let's uh, do the before and after. So this is your base stats you should definitely have for your wizard. Eight strength. Dexterity 16, Constitution 14, Intelligence 20, once you go through 1 through 12 on the leveling, 10 Wisdom and 10 Charisma. So this is after when you do the stat boosts, as I did mention. Strength 8, Dexterity 16, Constitution 14, Intelligence 22. Now if you spare Auntie Eth though, I go for 23 because later on if you do a certain choice towards the end of the game, you get a temporary boost in stats to bump it up to 24. Wisdom 10 and Charisma 10. So we're going to go ahead for the next part of this build video. Is uh, you guessed it, Tadpole Powers. Here are the Tadpole Powers I will suggest. I split into two categories. Now please note, there's the Reflective Shell. You could get either before consuming the Astral Tadpole or after. I put in the after because there's special conditions you need to do in order to get this. So... Let's do the before you do decide to consume that astral tadpole. Favorable beginnings boosts attack rolls or gives you advantage in dialogues. We're not going to do the attack roll once because you're not going to be meeting with a staff. No, instead, you want this for advantage in dialogues, basically. Now, next one is charm prevents a foe attacking you for one turn. So, if there's a foe trying to come towards you, or you know it, that foe that will definitely come towards you, hit the charm on them. If uh, they don't uh, pass the charm rolls, then what happens is is they won't attack. You'll attack someone else, like, for example, Lizelle, I'm just saying. Now, this next one's a really good one. Shield of Thralls. Make a shield on you or your allies that has 10 hit points. When those 10 hit points goes, then, uh, of course, that shield blows up. Anyone around the area of the shield who are foes, they get stunned. Very good power to abuse. You want this. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the... If you definitely just consume that astral tadpole. Now we're going to go ahead and talk about when you do consume that astral touch tadpole. Black hole, this is an AoE attack. This is really OP. It does a lot of damage. Towards the end of the game, certain foes did get one shot from this. You want to abuse this five times before you have to do a long rest. You want to get that ASAP. Fly, gain ability to fly, just like the fly spell. Except for if you uh, do it correctly, you fly away from foes. Now, if you do a certain thing at the Githyanki Crash, then what happens is you get used as a bonus action. And let me tell you, that fly spell, I'm going to say, helped out greatly. Repulsor, AoE pushback damage. In other words, another one of those like Thunder Wave, but much more powerful. Enemies come towards you, try and swarm you. Use this, push them all away from you. Free cast, next ability, spells, or anything else is free of charge to use. Oh, especially for a wizard, you really want to use this. So, for example, you want to cast Chain Lightning. However, you don't want to use up the last level 6 spell slot. Tap that free cast button, pick Chain Lightning, then go Emperor Palpatine all over them. Now, uh, this is the one I did talk about. You have to do some special conditions here uh, before or after using the Astral Tadpole. Reflective Shell must pass three Illithic Wisdom skill checks. And then a dream sequence happens, you get this. Wizard only. I am, I'll mention this now. Uh, protective Shell, I think, evolves you. Once that happens, it reflects any projectiles target at you to a point of origin. Does not work against foes who can see through illusions or foes that are not in line of sight. Very great protective ability for a wizard. You must want to have it. Save scum on any of the uh, Lithic Wisdom skill checks if you need to. And that's about it for Tadpole Powers. For the next part of this build video, we're going to go ahead and talk about one thing that's important. Gear of Ice. I'm going to go over the Gear of Ice. I did split it into two categories. Number one, you should have the gear 
by the end of Act 1. In other words, before you enter the Shadow Curse Lands to start Act 2. And finally, End Game Gear. If it mentions an act, make sure you get said item before leaving said act. So let's go ahead and start with Gear Advice by the end of Act 1. Let's uh, go over the headgear. So Circular Blasting, Scorching Ray, that means it'll hurl three rays of fire. You get to select where it goes. Each ray does 2 to 12 fire damage. Blurk sells this in the Underdark Act 1. Now, if you cannot get that yet or so, you want some alternative, it's the Haste Helm. Gains momentum for three rounds, you move around a lot more better. This is in a locked chest in the Blighted Village in Act 1. On to the next set of gear. Chest pieces! So let's go ahead and talk about, in this case, robes. The Protexacy Spark Wall, high spell casting, you gain a plus one bonus to spell saves. And another thing is, is uh, this will give you ability called Spark Wall Armor. The warrior has plus one armor class and same throws as long as they have lightning charges. So if you have an item that does uh, do lightning charges, you'll gain that bonus. This is in a rubble pile in the Grim Forge Underdark area in Act 1, aka Underdark Part 2. You have to go through some areas in order to get this rubble pile. It's a long process to talk about, so it's a good item to look for. Now, in case you don't want to do all that, another one is the Poisoner's Robes. This will give you poison trails. So when the caster casts a spell that deals poison damage, it deals additional 1d4 poison damage. The Spire Matra underneath the Blighted Village drops this in Act 1. That big spider. Now, in case you don't know what it looks like, I have a short that shows you how to one-shot it. Unfortunately, you lose the robes. Now, another alternative I did not list is the reward type of robes you get if you side with the Druids. You heard me right. So if you help out the Druids against the Goblins towards the end of that quest, you get a nice key, and then you open up, of course, an area that gets these uh, robes. On to the next set of equipment. Let's uh, go over the gloves. So let me explain on uh, that. Bracers of Defense gain plus two AC as long as you're not wearing any armor and or shield. Under the Blight Village where the secret necromancy basement is at in Act 1. The exact same place where you did get the mouthy closet. Yeah, that scroll. Or they call, call them shovel. Here's another alternative I decided to list. Gloves of Hail of Thorns. Hail of Thorns spell shoots a volley of thrones. The thorns uh, deal weapon damage to the target. Then explodes. The explosion deals an additional 110d piercing damage to the target and surrounds creatures. On miss, the thorns still explode. On save, targets still take half damage from explosion. Sold by Bream in the Zents hideout in Act 1. So you gotta help out the Zents in order to uh, definitely get this. In other words, you gotta complete the missing shipment quest. And of course, once that happens, you get an invite to their hideout. Otherwise, you're gonna have to do a whole bunch of che talking checks in order to be friendly with the Zents to buy this. Let's go to the next set of gear. We are now at the boots. Boots of Genile Striding. The wearer's movement speed is unimpeded by difficult terrain. Now, uh, please note, Blurk sells this in the Underdark Act 1. Now, here's another alternative, which is good cinder shoes. When you burn a foe, you get heat. Heat is when you take 1 to 4 fire damage. However, you get plus 1 fire damage to your fire spells. And that's this one's all right, but it's a good alternative. Blurk sells this in the Underdark Act 1. Yeah, same place where you get the other boots. Now, unfortunately, there's no good cloaks in Act 1, so we'll skip that. There's some better ones in Act 2 and 3. Necklace, Amulet of Misty Step. Gain Misty Step spell to use in the Shadow Sanctuary at True Soul Gets Cores in Act 1. I didn't list the uh, disengr I should say disengaging boots because I prefer rogues use that, and that's the same as the Amulet of Misty Step, basically, for all uh, one of the parts. Okay, next up, here's a good alternative in case you don't want to use this amulet. Pearl of Power Amulet restores one spell slot that is level 3 and lower. Omelin, that is the Mind Flayer who is by his friend Blurg in the Underdark, will sell this after completing the Mind Flayer's quest in Act 1. Yeah, you're going to be going to the Arcane Tower to get a special flower, so once you do that, then you visit our man, uh, the friendly Mind Flayer, go through some checks and other things, and when you complete the quest, you have access to his shop. Let's uh, go ahead and go to another set of gear. Now, next up to bat is Ring of Absolute Force. Use Thunder Wave spell. If Absolute branded, you deal one extra damage. Thunder Wave spell is just like the spell you did see earlier in this build. Sergeant Thrin in the Grim Forge Underdark area in Act 1 will sell this to you or drop it. 
Ring of Protection, plus one AC and saving throws. Complete most quests in Act 1 at the Druids Camp before finishing up Investigate Kaga and or Saving Halcyn. So in other words, you got to steal a certain statue in order to complete the quest. Now, in case you don't want to do any of the statue stealing or you have trouble getting the other two, Crusher Band, movement speed plus three. Steal or loot Crusher to get this item in the Goblin Cap in Act 1. And by the way, the uh, Ring of Protection Act quest is only in Act 1. The spark wall cannot be electrocuted. Electric resistance increase at the arcade tower basement. Iron dark in act one. Go in the arcade tower, complete it. You have access to the basement. So easy. Bada bing, bada boom. We're going to go over the weapons. There's not much selection, so I figured this is the best way to go. Staff of crones. You get the ray of sickness like the spell. And that spell does this 2 to 12 damage and can't poison your target. This is in the acrylic workshop where you fought Auntie Ethel for the first time in Act 1. So you can either kill her, get the key, or spare her. She'll give you a nice uh, ability point item. And then you have to jimmy the lock in order to get this item. Now in case you don't want to do that, here's a good off turn. Melt's first staff. This will give you arcane enchantment. You gain a bonus plus one bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls. Also you get one free use of the level 2 Melt's asset arrow, just like the level 2 spell. Blurk sells this in the Underdark in Act 1. Now, for uh, ranged weapons, I only listed this for item use. Not really using a ranged weapon. So if you're going to go range, use your level 0 spells if you decide to run out of your other 1 through 6 spells. But seriously, I'm going to go get this one only. Hunting Shortbow. Uh, this is, gives you Feller of Monsters. You have advantage against monstrous type of enemies if you want to use that bow for that. But here's the thing you want to definitely use it for really. Hunter's Mark. This will uh, give you give your foe that you mark disadvantages so this way your party members have advantages against said foes. This is a one time use. That's a long rest uh, item type of deal. Now Damon sells this at the Druid's Grove in Act 1. Use the Hunter's Mark for tough fights. Seriously. I would say otherwise, you didn't get that boat. Use your spells for range, to be honest, because you're a wizard. You're going to be using magic more than using a uh, bow. But still, as I mentioned before, I put that there really just for the item use. That's about it for gear. You should get by end of Act 1. On to the end game gear. Now, please note once again, if I did mention an act, make sure you do get the item in said act where it's at before leaving the act. So let's uh, go ahead with the headgear. Hood of the Weave. Arcade enchantment. You gain a plus two bonus to spell saves, DC, and spell attacks. Sold by the Mystic Charon in Act 3. So uh, before, uh, you know, going ahead killing him, buy it. Now, in case you accidentally kill him or did not get to the Mystic Charon yet, Helldux Helm, Infernal Sight. You can see in a magical and ordinary darkness up to 12 meters. It's like Dark Sight, but better. You cannot be blinded, cannot be critical hit upon, plus two saving throws against spells, immoralizing gaze, searing and frightening a target with nothing but your growler. You deal an additional 2d8 fire damage against burning creatures. So using fire spells, this is great for it. In a locked room in the House of Hope, so make sure you get through the process of that, otherwise it's locked for good. On to the next set of equipment. For the cloaks, I have exactly two of them. Cloak of the Weave, you get a plus one bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls. Absorb elemental damage once per short rest. You can also take half elemental damage next time you hit with it. And you deal 1d6 damage of that elemental on your next attack. Could be spells or anything. So by Hellskit at the Devil's Feet in Act 3. Yeah, that's the same place where you go to hell, literally and figuratively. Both of them, depending on how you feel. Now, uh, next up is the Cloak of Protection. It's a nice alternative. This gives you plus one AC and plus one saving throws. Sold by Core Master Tally at the Last Light in an Act 2. On to the next set of equipment. Robes of the Weave. You gain a plus one bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls. Whenever the wearer succeeds a saving throw against a spell, they regenerate 1 through 6 hit points. Located inside a glove of invulnerability in the Ramsitz Tower in Act 3. Now, you're going to need a high arcane check for it, so this character does have it, so you'll be able to easily get this. Now, here's a good off turn in case you really, I do mean really mess up on, you guessed it, getting a rover weave, or you haven't got to it yet. 
Rove of Supreme Defenses. While concentrating, you add a spell casting modifier to your saving throws and gain a plus one bonus to your armor class. So, for example, if it's intelligence and you have a modifier of six, you get a plus six saving throws added to that. So, by Ferg in Rivington in Act 3. Now, uh, please note, this is very important. That's the guy with the mustache that looks like he's up to no good. Do not bring Shao Hart to Ferg until you buy what you need. So, Shao Hart must not be in the party at all. If Shao Hart is your main character, I definitely do advise moving her very far away from Ferg. So, this way, the person there could buy, you know, I mean, the robe. Let's move on to the next set of gear. So let's go over the gloves, shall we? Quick spell gloves. Level zero spells that cost an action, cost a bonus action instead. This effect can be used once per short rest. This is at the Sorcerer Sundries in Act 3. One I should actually buy there. Now here's a good alternative in case you uh, cannot get to that yet or you haven't got to that point in Act 3. Gemini gloves, level zero spells targeting foes and allies can target an additional creature. So, for example, using Firebolt, instead of one target, you could do it two times. So, you could do it at the same target or two different targets of your choice. Now, this can be used once per short rest, sold by Husks at the Devil's Feet in Act 3. She has a whole bunch of good stuff there. So, let's keep on going. Now, uh, next up are the boots. Yep, your footwear. Boots of Arcane Bolstering. Each time they dash, in other words, you dash, the wearer gains Arcane Charge for two turns. Arcane Charge is when you get a plus two bonus to spell damage. So run, and then uh, boom, those boots will uh, trigger your bonus spell damage. Aja at the Moonrise Tower sells this in Act 2. That is the Strength Potion Lady that you bring Estera and have her, have her bitten by him. Definitely want to buy those. Just trust me. Here's a good alternative. Helldux Boots cannot be moved by magic or normal means. Immune to difficult terrain. When you fail a saving throw, you can use your reactions to see instead. When you do teleport to the area, you do 2-16 damage in the area. This is in Lord Gortash's room. Lord Gortash has the key. Unless you, of course, uh, agree to make an alliance with them after killing or in the red. Then you could try to go ahead and steal that if you want to. Let's move on to the next set of equipment. We have ourselves some necklaces, so let's uh, go ahead and do that. Spell Crook's Amulet, Spell Slot's Restoration. This means replenishes and spend a spell slot of any level as a bonus action. This is only once per long rest. So, for example, you wasted a level 6 spell slot, you need more level 6 spells to cast. Pop this baby and you're good to go do Chain Lightning again, or something of that matter. The Warrant in Moonrise Tower Prison drops this in Act 2, so kill the Warrant. Make sure you definitely do that. Next up is the Amulet of Greater Health. Constitution set to 23, advantage on con save throws. This is in the archives at the House of Hope in Act 3. So don't leave the House of Hope until you loot that sucker up. Let's move on to the rings. We're going to go ahead and talk about the rings. So let's go ahead and do the first one. Killer Sweetheart, when you kill a creature, your next attack roll will be a critical hit. This is at the self-same trial in the Gauntlet Shark in Act 2. Another good ring is the Shifting Corpus Ring. This gives you two spells. Each requires a long rest. They are invisibility, just like the invisibility spell. You, you are invisible until you do an action. And the Blur spell. So uh, this way you don't waste a level 2 spell slot on that one. Now this is dropped by the Flame Fist Marcus at the Last Light in in Act 2. So it's like a story uh, drop. You'll usually get it. Unless you side with him, of course. Here's a good alternative, Ring of Free Action. You ignore the effects of difficult terrain and cannot be paralyzed or restrained. Aja, that is the Strength Potion NPC, sells this in Act 2 at the Moonrise Towers. Last but not least is the Cryptic Lord Ring. Creates Undead, that's a level 6 spell. Use a corpse to summon a mummy to fight for your cause. You will have to kill the Mystic Charon for it, so you have to do the quest that will remove his immortality by destroying his four jars. One of them has a heart in it, which will definitely strip his immortality away. Then you can go kill him. I advise definitely uh, get rid of all four jars. And this is in Act 3, by the way. And that's about it for rings. Let's go on to the staffs. So here are the main hand weapons you should definitely use, or I should say weapons. The uh, Mark Oshaka. That's hard to pronounce. It's a legendary staff. 
You get a plus one bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls. You also get the arcane battery. This is when you click on the icon for it. Once you do that, the spell you cast is free a charge. So uh, here's the uh, deal on this. Also, you get the Kirisaka favor. That means you get 50% resistance of your elemental choice and spells with it. So you'll be different set of spells you uh, get. Too many to list. <laughs> Just experiment with it. It's real good. Locate inside a glove of invulnerability in the Ramzitz Tower in Act 3. Staff a spell power. This is a nice alternative, by the way. You get a plus one bonus to spell save, DC, and spell attack rolls. You also get Arcane Battery. See the the uh, previous staff above. Found in a locked room in the House of Hope in Act 3. Those are your two best, uh, I should say, staffs for your spellcaster. Let's get to the ranged weapons. Like the Act 1 variant, I should say, of ranged weapons, you want this time the Dark Fire Short Bow, plus 2 Short Bow, gains resistance to fire and ice, can cast haste. Damon sells this Act 2, if you're lucky, Act 3 as well. Uh, my advice about this, just only use the haste feature and take advantage of the resistance to fire and ice. Otherwise, uh, don't use ranged weapons, instead use your level 0 to 6 spells for ranged DPS. But still, that's just there like a clicky in like in those MMOs. That's about it for gear. My next part of this build video is potions, oils, and elixirs. For this build, I'm only going to go ahead and list the potions and the elixirs. Now, oils is mainly used to coat your weapon. You have to get up front and close and personal with foes. You really don't want to do that all with a wizard or anybody else who casts spells. So let's start with the potions, shall we? As always, healing potions of all types are a must. Any of them, just trust me. Potion of haste, gain extra action, plus 2 AC, advantage on deck saving throws, and double movement speed. This is a good potion. Most used in OP potion in the uh, game. Potion of flying, same as the fly spell. You fly around with it, that's fun. Now this one I added for our spell casters. Potion of angelic slumber. Drinker goes to sleep for two rounds. When they wake up, they are healed like a long rest. There's a lesser version of uh, that around, however, they get healed up to a certain point. Not like this one, which is really great to find. Stock on these big time, especially when you're ready for Act 3. On to the Elixirs. The Elixir of Vigilance gain a plus 5 bonus initiative and cannot be surprised. Elixirs of Viciousness increase your chance to land a critical hit, especially with spells. Elixir of Bloodlust. Upon killing your foe, you get 5 extra hit points. Very useful for a wizard since they have low hit points. And an extra bonus attack as well. Elixir of Peerless Focus. Gain advantage on concentration saves. Really useful, folks. Drink that one up like crazy. Now, the Supreme Elixir of Arc Arcane Cultivation grants an additional level 4 spell slot. Now, there's lesser versions of those, so when you play throughout the game for any Arcane Cultivation potions, abuse those as well. Once again, no oil since you don't want to get up front, close, and personal. Now, for the next part of this build video is combat demonstration. So, for the combat test, I'm going to go ahead and test out two of the acts since I already did Act 3. So, for example, Act 1, we have to get the Yankee Crash. Now they're ticked off at us for, for no reason. I'm using Gale as the setup man. It's a risky move, but if you could definitely pull it off while hiding... In other words, you get some starting damage, plus your foes will be surprised, which is a great thing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, definitely miss the step out of the way. And, of course, skip the other character around just to show you how valuable Gale is this style. So anyways, our foes are more surprised at this point in time. And we have Gale once again doing trolling round two. We're going to go ahead and toss another fireball. Uh, let me uh, make sure I could definitely get there first. Okay, let's just stay there. And let's see what else I could definitely do. Okay, I can't do it. I'm going to go ahead and just wait for them to come to me. Sometimes you got to let them come to you so this way you do another fireball attack. See, Gale just did another fireball attack. I set themselves up so perfectly. At this point in the battle, I test run this. Yeah, Gale's the number one DPS of the team. Despite the fact I have other three strong DPS characters with me. So yeah, Gale could either set things up for you finish them off or definitely in this case both of them so let's uh, go ahead and definitely demonstrate 
a little bit more tougher bout, I should say, act number two. Sometimes you're atop of DPS to wipe out many foes. Other times you set things up. In this case, you're the setup person. Now, later on in the game, you have the Glove of Invulnerability. You also set things up in a non-combat matter. So, I'm going to demonstrate with uh, Gale taking out these two targets. Yeah, at least lead the Skull and uh, do a little bit of damage to our little gold-plated friend here. So, when you see foes like this that's linked to other enemies, and you have to kill those foes before taking out the boss itself like this one, well, we're going to just have Gale demonstrate another evocation spell, Fireball, this case. Oh, don't worry, I use Call Lightning later on. See, we just weaken our foes' hit points, and at this time, our other characters could take out the skulls, then the gold play of foe. So that's about it for this part of the build video. I'm going to give some final advice before I do end this build. So once you do start out, it's going to be a little bit slow until you actually get the right levels. I should say level 4 and 5. So once you, uh, for example, at level 4 and 5, you get Fireball and haste things will start to look really up getting the correct items is a good way to go make sure you have the correct evocation spell so this way sometimes you are the uh, setup man and other times you're the room clear see look at that we're uh, wiping out foes like crazy or weakening them to the uh, point where other characters could just wreck everything in sight so uh, another advice i'm gonna definitely give is take advantage of your spells like misty step and dimension door so this way you can get away from foes that try to close in on you. Definitely use your Mind Flayer powers if you need to. Abuse some potions in this game. I mean, come on, the elixirs are OP as heck. Another thing, the utility spells like Glove and Vulnerability is definitely used for bosses. Your evocation spells, if you use it correctly, you can wreck everything in sight without any problems at all. Well, this is it for my Baldur's Gate 3 Pure Wizard Evocation Epic High Damage Build video. This is Lorfent signing off. Thanks for watching and have a great day or night. Do please stay safe. Please subscribe to my channel for more classic and modern Dungeons and Dragons walkthroughs, builds, guides, and more just like this. If you like what you see, then uh, go ahead and pick my suggestion on the upper left-hand corner or YouTube suggestion on the bottom left-hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and relax in this nice chair.